Okay, doing some work on a uh, 2012 Fiat 500, uh, 1.4 liter engine, non-turbo. Uh, last three times she was out on a road, more than 10 miles, she'd uh, had some issues with stall, being getting rough idling and stalling out. Third time it just died, we had to have a flat bedded back. While that was going on, of course, Christmas and everything else goes on, so it got pushed at a back burner. Did a little bit of research, and but basically what I was reading that it was more than likely an issue with the uh, multi-air uh, oil screen filter that's down in the side over, hidden back over here. So we replaced that. We still had to, it wanted to start, but wouldn't start. So we pulled the top off, pulled the uh, coils out. And as we pulled the coils out, we're going to flip over to where we have them right here. We're going to show you what we actually found. And these are in order that they came out right here. As you can see, plenty of corrosion, rust, oil, more oil. Plug number one. Almost touching. Plug number two. Totally burned out. Plug number three, guts totally missing, no pin, nothing. And plug number four, pretty much normal, a little rich, but the way to... And believe it or not, the car was actually running very well. It was picked up, had power and everything. We were just totally surprised. Now, when we took the plugs out, two and three were both loose. Uh, two was exceptionally loose. We would not believe how loose it was. Uh, so we ordered new plugs. We're using the NGK Iridium. NGK is the original provider. Lancia NGK plugs are the original plugs. And we got the Delphi, uh, right there, Delphi coils for replacement. And these are brand new. They redesigned the seal up here a little bit so it doesn't have that funny thing sticking down. That would cause it to uh, crinkle up. These are the old seals there. They would all, want to go down evenly. So they eliminate it. They got a new seal on it. But inside the uh, bores, uh, we have to do a, a solid cleaning. And uh, just going to show inside real quick. Cylinder number one. Cylinder number two, cylinder number three, and cylinder number four looks pretty clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the old plugs back in, and we're going to use Scotch-Brite and a little bit of brake clean to score to clean the inside. We're going to use this Scotch-Brite cut into strips that will fit inside and twist it around inside and up and down. And we'll clean it out with uh, with uh, brake clean and then blast it out, get it all nice and clean. We want to be particularly easy because, uh, as everybody knows, we've worked on these. These seals right here are very delicate. Luckily, we don't have any leaking from them, so, and we don't want to cause an issue with that. So we're just going to use a scotch spray and clean up as much as we can before we reassemble. Uh, we are going to look at cylinder number three with a scope. To make sure that uh, there's no excessive damage from when that spark plug came apart, which we have no idea how long it's been running like that. We'll give an update when uh, we have everything together and, and running. Okay, the saga continues, 2012 Fiat 500. Uh, as you can see, we have the top of the engine off. We got the valve cover off, and we did remove the multi-air box. Uh, what happened was after we put in new spark plugs and coils, uh, we did not put the air box back on and we tried to start it and we were getting massive blowout up out of the intake manifold right here while the throttle body and everything was on. So uh, we realized we had a uh, stuck valve, intake valve open and uh, so we pulled off the valve cover and we removed the multi air box and as you can see these are the where the multi-air box went right along here and those are the intake valves that it operates right here two for each cylinder 
uh, we did not cut the tab for the intake manifold uh, I had heard that if you bring if you cut that tab and you bring your car in for service they will not service anything on the engine until the intake manifold is replaced with an original solid piece so we went and found a couple special little wrenches and we were able to move it back far enough to get the valve cover off and by removing the top cover of the multi air box off we were able to wiggle it out uh, so once we wiggled it out we found out that our main problem actually was the multi air box and we're going to go over to that now we're going to show you what we've done with it so far and what we found to be the and what we and, and what we found to be the problem is <laughs> This is the multi air box, and uh, this is looking at the bottom side, and these are the plungers that operate the valves. They're filled with oil. Okay, when we took this out, cylinder number three quite literally fell apart. Here's the assembly, and this part right here is the part that you see sticking up, spring in between, and a little spacer at the bottom. They go inside of this. Uh, if you look closely at this right here, there's a little groove right here. There's supposed to be a spring clip inside there, like a, a wire clip, that prevents it from coming out the top right here. So when we pulled the multi-air box, that quite literally fell out into the thing. We have searched high and low. We have not found that little spring clip. Uh, the other issue we had when we opened it up was on cylinder one, this piston, which you can see is working now, was stuck all the way up and it would not move. You could jam, you could push it down. It had a metallic feel to it. It would not go down. Now, uh, it goes up and down good. So what we discovered was all the things you see how they're raised right now were all like this, sunk down in, no way to get them up, no spring on them. We couldn't figure out what was going on. So we took this one apart since it was already broken and saw what we had in here. And then we took this one apart. We pulled this one out. And that's when we discovered that there's this little clip right here on that piece that holds it together, and that's what's missing. We looked in the engine. We couldn't find it. But after we put it together, we realized, hey, it's, it's working right now. It's, it's actually going up and down. It's got free play. All the rest were stuck down like this right here, except... This one, which was jammed upward, it was much higher than what it's showing now. It was up like that right there. And we feel, and it would not go down. It would move a little bit, but it had a metallic, it did, just didn't move. Now it moves freely. So we think we, we're under the assumption, I know it makes an ass out of you and me, that this was holding the intake valve open, and that's why the car was not firing up. So right now, we're in the process of taking, we're going to be taking these two out and simply taking them out and pulling them apart. Uh, these, this chamber in here with the oil in between there is just filled with some solid, solid gunk. And once you get them apart, it's a little involved getting them apart because you got to put a pin in. There's a little hole here on this and you got to stick it through the side of that into that and then turn it and twist it off and it'll finally come apart. So it's a little involved getting these out and cleaning them. But again, once they're out and, and cleaned and that the stuff that's baked into there, they seem to function right. So our next step is we're going to go get a gasket. we got a local Chrysler dealer that hopefully carries this gasket. We're going to get the gasket. We're going to put this on per spec after we find some kind of replacement for this clip right here. This is our next step. Now, if anybody uh, knows uh, what these... Uh, hydraulic pushers are because they're hydro it's a hydraulic action pushing down on the valves uh, if anybody knows what they are or if anybody knows what rebuild or replacements or combine them single please leave a message in the uh, comments down below uh, we're gonna have this one video up just to get the information out and we'll have another video once we have everything back together and hopefully with our fingers crossed running and if you do have any information about the multi-air box, please leave a comment. Thank you.